This is a two-part video on how to get measurements out of Max, and by that I mean you can might use this for a real-world project like I am using it for a woodworking project. This isn't about Max at all, so this is for people who are already familiar with Max. Um, and as for why you would use this instead of a real woodworking program or computer-aided design program, well, Max just has a lot of it has you can do literally everything and in case in point we can even do some woodworking if you're very careful about it and uh, the bonus is you can do stuff like I've got these posable dummies I can pose and you can't do that in other programs which are specifically tailored for woodworking and I can just see how four people might go at my four player control panel and see if they would feel cluttered or I've got another layer for um, just not that seating. We got one for standing. We got one player, four players. So yeah, um, you can do all this and just lay it out with these nested layers to make things as simple or as complicated as you need to be. Because Max can, it might be a bit cluttered, but you can do everything and you can also configure it. So make it, you can make it as easy as you want if you know your way around. So. My first advice for using it for real world measurements, if you know anything about Max, if you know anything about Max, you know that it works in point, the vertices here, and if you want a curved corner, you got to make a whole lot more points with the chamfer tool. Um, and then if you need to change the shape, the, you try and move the corner around and the curve's no longer valid because it's the wrong shape and it gets wonky. So you just work with hard points and it's easy to manipulate your shape and get it right and when you're roughing things out especially and trying to work out sizing and, and stuff like that um, <clears throat> and yeah I just have another I, I just what I do is I make a, another one where I'll save a new file and just smooth everything off just to see how it's going and you can see here I've got these concave uh, corners and convex ones which I know I can add uh, later easily um, in woodworking because of the way you can do woodworking uh, it's very easy to round things off with a jigsaw and you can find advice for that um, one tip for corners is you can get a tin and just put it on the corner of wherever and line it up or a jar or anything that's kind of the right size and just draw around it and there's your curve even a very small curve you don't even have to do that you can just lop off a 45 degree wedge and then sand it down do it by eye and it's a small curve and it looks nice um, so Max isn't computer aided design tool like SketchUp so when you make a line you can't or an edge you can't just get the, the length of an edge like that like you could on SketchUp or something like that which is awesome don't get me wrong these tools are way better at what they do than Max is uh, but it's just you might be more familiar with Max and that's another reason to to choose this if you're already into Max and you know your way around you can do this uh, you don't have to learn a whole other program a whole other program so but yeah I can't get the distance of something so uh, there is a way to do that but that's not important for what I'm about to show you but I'll show you that in part two for another approach for now what we'll do is we want the 2D feature of Max. We want uh, I'm just going to make a new layer for the purposes of the tutorial um, called Temp, and I'll put it in my other layers, or my other sorry, my other measurements layer um, because that's where I've got all my measurements. And I've got I'll show you now. Turn off the cabinet. Uh, turn off the cabinet. Oh no, what's going on? Hang on a second. Didn't I add this? Oh. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh no. There, that should go in there. Because I made a new layer with that selected, it just went through it in there. That'll gotcha. Max has a few of them. Anyway, measurements. Yes. Let's look at the measurements. Turn off the cabinet. Let's go. Now, I'll go to my. Uh, I'll turn the cabinet on. Just to show you, I'm going to the left view. And uh, I've got these, I'll turn the cabinet off now. And I've got these, and I'll turn the grid off too because it kind of gets in the way of these. Uh, yeah, I've got a layer for each sheet of MDF. It's, it's not complicated, I don't know. I just named them what the size of the MDF sheet. MDF is medium density fiberboard. 
really cool to work with for projects like this. Um, and it's very flat. And although it can be weaker in some ways, it doesn't matter for most things. You just got to know, just get advice if you're not sure about what piece of wood to use for what part. But um, MDF is pretty versatile. Um, yeah, I'm just showing you the different layers that I made, the different sizes of uh, MDF sheets that I'm going to cut and all the shapes that I'm going to cut out of them. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So go back to my temp layer, which I've just made for the purposes of the video. I've just called it temp, which is a really bad name, but just trying to be quick here. Um, and yeah, max, when you draw a, you go to 2D objects there, you create tab, 2D objects, rectangle, and just draw a new rectangle. It uses sizes. Go to modify tab. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, uh, also you can set up your units, which if you don't know already, and you probably should, maybe, I don't know, if you've been doing game modeling, maybe it doesn't matter, maybe you've been working in a way that doesn't matter, but you go to customize, let's do that again, customize units setup, and I'm choosing metric and centimeters. Mostly all that does is put a little CM on the end of everything, but it does, it does have some implications, but most for the most part max doesn't really care a unit is a unit and you can do whatever call it whatever you want as long as you're consistent if I make something 10 units long and I'm calling it centimeters then if I make something 40 units long that's also 40 centimeters in my mind but this is a handy way of just yeah it does have some implications but mostly it's superficial but it reminds us we're working in centimeters of nothing else um, and the hardware store works in millimeters, and that is much more sensible, but most of us are more used to centimeters, I imagine. Um, you can estimate those sizes in your head better, um, but it um, doesn't matter. You can just convert from millimeters um, by lopping off a zero, so that's fine. Uh, or raising the decimal point. So first thing is, yeah, let's get. I know the hardware store, it calls it 2,000... Um, 400 millimeters, which is 240 centimeters, and it's gonna be 120 centimeters. I just memorized it, so 1200 millimeters. And <clears throat> we want to snap this to the zero position of the world, which for reasons which will become very apparent shortly. Turn the snapping tool on, right click. A snapping is on grid points and on vertices, those two things. Click, hover over the corner so you get your little yellow cross here on the point and drag down to... Now, I've got axis constraints on. And if you don't know what that is, I'll just go quickly, up, right click the grid snapping, options, enable axis constraints. It allows you to constrict movement to one axis or another axis or both before you do your move. But you probably know that if you're familiar with Max. I just thought I'd cover it. Some people don't know it. Um, so that's snap to zero, and here's why. Let's go back to the cabinet. Now we want. I just want to draw into the temp layer there. So I've got that active with that icon. Um, and you want the line tool. Now this is for weird shapes. You can do anything with this, but I'll show you a, a quicker way in part two that works really well for square shapes. But for now. Here we are, we're going to snap, we're going to turn off snapping for grid points, because that's just going to get in the way. I just want to snap to vertices. Now, I'll start, I'm just going to tra <coughs> trace over this shape. As you can see, snapping from point to point. Um, I'm going to zoom in here because there's a point that I know is here, which is hard to choose because it's right next to another one. So I click there. <coughs> I'm just using the mouse wheel to pan and zoom in and out. and trace, place, play, connect the dots. And then putting the last point down is very easy to close the shape with snapping on because it snaps right on it and it detects close spline. Yes, we're finishing. Uh, if you didn't have snapping on, you could end up with two points really close to each other and you'd have to go and fix that and it's a big hassle. So now I've got a shape. Now, uh, there it is. And I'm gonna turn off the cabinet and I'm also going to snap this one to zero on its bottom corner just because that's where I want it on the MDF board. Bam. 
like that. It was access constrained, but it's it's in the right spot. It's fine. Um, so yeah. Now I'll just turn that to a brighter color so we can see it, and I'll also turn the grid off, which will help. Sometimes these um, square shapes don't show up when you have grid enabled. If you just turn grid off, you see them. So, um, Lion Tool, go in to its properties and select vertex mode. These points now represent where on the board to mark your points that you're going to cut between. So, yeah. Um, click on this point. It's because where everything's at zero, their vertex positions now represent actual measurements on the board that you can mark out. If I just check that up and down, uh, right click to cancel that. Turn grid snapping off like that. Turn snapping off. And uh, I want to know what the height is. If I grab it, it is called Z, and I can see Z's down there. But if I just want to check, I can just quickly drag it and see that that Z down there is moving. I know that's Z. Right click to cancel that. If I moved it, let go, I need a control Z to undo. Just remember that. But if you're good at max, you know that. So this is 169 centimeters 0.6 up from the bottom. I can mark that on the board and I can move to the next point. Click on that. Now the Y, right click, is 46 centimeters. It's negative, but that doesn't matter. Max considers everything on this side of the line to be negative because because it just depends what view we're in, but it doesn't really matter what view you choose to be in, whether things are negative, X, Y, Z, just look at what is up, what is across, and it's 46, it doesn't matter the negative, 46 away from the edge. So you can measure on your board 46 away, centimeters away from the edge, and 208 centimeters up from the bottom, 0.3 if you want, and mark the point. And you could draw a line between the two points with your ruler or whatever and again for the next point and so on and you just play you just mark out the points using the height and the horizontal position and um, draw lines between them so that'll work for weird shapes that you need to cut out and that's a point by point sort of a way to work which will work for any sort of a shape and of course you can cut your curves as you go so I can cut along this line like that using some sort of a guide if I want, but that's part of woodworking which we can get into. If you're interested, just ask me in the comments. And um, there's some, a few tips with that, but like I said, there's a, I think I mentioned, there's a tin. You can get a cup or a tin, put them on a corner here and just mark, draw a line, and you can, that's your corner there. Nice and smooth. Um, and if it's a small corners, you don't even need to do that. Just lop off a 45 degree wedge and just sand it down by eye and you get a, a nice little curve that for nothing. It, it's, it looks nice, trust me, it's really easy to make curves when you're sanding small bits down. Um, I guess because it's a gradual process. So, that's it for part one, and head on over to part two, because we're not finished. There's an even faster way for doing shapes that are square, and that might have little parts cut out of them. So, I'll see you in part two.